Sketch some vectors in the vector field given by capital vector F. So I'm just going to rewrite our given vector field here in its component form. So I have capital vector F of x, y, defined by the components, minus 2y, minus 2x. And for simplicity, I'm going to factor out that scalar 2. And I'm leaving the negatives on the inside here because I want to find vectors of equal length in this field and classify the corresponding level curve. So we know we've got to find that magnitude. So we're going to use this to find vectors of equal length. And also classify the level curve. So to find vectors of equal length, we need to let the magnitude of this vector field be equal to some arbitrary constant c. So c is our scalar. So finding the magnitude here, we have 2 multiplied by the square root of negative y squared, so that's y squared, plus x, or mi minus x squared, which gives us positive x squared, and this is equal to our arbitrary constant c. And we can simplify this further. We can rewrite this as the square root of x squared plus y squared. And I divide both sides by 2 to give us c over 2. And we can now use this to identify or classify the level curve. And we can classify the level curve by squaring both sides of our equation, which leaves us with x squared plus y squared all over c squared by 4. So we have a circle, our level curve is a circle, centered at the origin. Of radius, the absolute value of c over 2. And so we are going to now go ahead and use this to sketch a graph. So to sketch this vector field, we want to choose a value for c. So looking at the arbitrary level curve here, the easiest value of c to pick is going to be 2. It's not an exclusive solution, but it's the easiest one. So if we let c be equal to 2, our level curve becomes x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 squared, which is 4 by 4, which is 1. And it's our unit circle. Woo! -hoo. So we're going to use this level curve, and we're going to select points on this level curve and determine what the vectors at those points look like. So we create, we create our table of values. So we have points x, y, again, that sit on the unit circle. So using the x and y intercepts to start, we have 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, minus 1. And we use these points to find vectors on the level curve. And our vectors here are defined by capital vector F of x, y, equal to 2 multiplied by the vector minus y minus x. So the vector at the ordered pair 1, 0 is going to be equal to 2 times the vector 0 minus 1. And so we can rewrite this as minus 2 j hat. So this is a vector of length 2 pointing in the negative y direction. So the vector at the ordered pair 0, 1 is equal to 2 multiplied by the vector minus 1, 0. So we can redefine this as negative 2 i hat. So we have a vector of length 2 pointing in the direct in the negative x direction. We have the vector at the ordered pair minus 1, 0. So this is 2 multiplied by the vector 0 
positive 1. And we can redefine this as 2 times vector j hat. So this is a vector of length 2 pointing in the positive y direction. And last but not least, we have the vector at the ordered pair 0, negative 1. So this is 2 multiplied by positive 1, 0. And redefining this, this is a vector of length 2 pointing in the positive x direction. And so we're ready now to go ahead and sketch these. So we have the y-axis and we have the x-axis. And again, if you have graphing paper, I encourage you to use it for accuracy. And we have classified the level curve that we are using here as the unit circle. And so we have the x and y intercepts at the order pairs 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So at the ordered pair 1, 0, we have a vector of length 2 pointing in the negative y direction. So at this point here, we have a vector of length 2 pointing in the negative y direction. At the ordered pair 0, 1, we have a vector of length 2 pointing in the negative x direction. So at the ordered pair 0, negative, or sorry, 0, 1, here's that vector of length 2 pointing in the negative x direction. At the ordered pair negative 1, 0, we have a vector of length 2 pointing in the positive y direction. So here's that ordered pair negative 1, 0, and we have pointing in the positive y direction. And then last but not least, at the ordered pair 0, negative 1, we have a vector of length 2 pointing in the positive x direction. So notice here again that we've got large gaps in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. So to fill in those gaps and to better understand what this vector field looks like, we want to consider an arbitrary ordered pair in each one of those quadrants. So, adding additional points to our table of values, we have that arbitrary ordered pair in quadrant 1, so both x and y are positive here. And we wanted to determine what direction is the vector pointing at this arbitrary ordered pair. So this would be 2 multiplied by a minus positive y and a minus positive x. So this is going to leave us with 2 multiplied by a vector with negative components. So using our slope here at the ordered pair in quadrant 1, we know that this vector is moving in the negative x direction and the negative y direction. So the vector is pointing down through the origin. So doing the same thing now with, with the arbitrary ordered pair in quadrant 3. We know in quadrant 3 both x and y are negative. And we want to use this ordered pair to determine what direction this vector is pointing. So we, here we have a minus a minus y coordinate and a minus minus x coordinate which gives us 2 times a vector who has both a positive x and y components. So again thinking and I'll use a different color here thinking about the ordered pair the arbitrary ordered pair in quadrant 3 we know that x has a positive or it's moving in a positive direction we have that y is also moving in a positive direction so the vector at this point in the field is pointing up towards quadrant 1. So now that we have an idea of what all of these vectors are doing in the different quadrants and at these x and y intercepts, let's go ahead and draw a larger graph here to see what this would look like. So again, you have your x or excuse me, your y-axis and our x-axis, y, and x. And I'm just going to use the knowledge of what our level curve looks like and the direction of each of the vectors in this field to sketch the entire vector field. So we have all of these level curves 
are circles of different radial lengths or varying radial lengths. Okay, so we've got three different level curves here. And using our knowledge from our previous sketch to scale, we know that all of the vectors that are existing in these quadrants one and three are going to be pointing inwards towards the origin. And I'm not drawing to scale here, just so we can appreciate what the picture looks like. We also know that the x and y intercepts are pointing towards each other. So here we have in quadrant four, those vectors are pointing towards each other. And all of these vectors are on each of these different level curves. In quadrant two, we have a similar idea. We know that the x and y intercepts are pointing towards each other. So now we can kind of better appreciate what this entire vector field is looking like. And you can sketch as many level curves and vectors as your little heart desires here to get a better idea. The more vectors on these level curves, the better interpretation we can make.